So non-controlling interest, very interesting one. So when it comes to dealing with non-controlling interest, it is what it is. There are two methods available generally that we can use to determine the value of non-controlling interest. I don't know if I have to define non-controlling interest. I've already said that over and over again. It is the percentage of ownership of the subsidiary where the parent entity acquires less than 100% of the subsidiary. So NCI can be valued at fair value or can be valued at proportionate or using what we call the proportionate method. So we have the fair value method and the proportionate method. If the question is quiet on how NCI is valued, your best bet is the proportionate method. Sounds good? If the question is quiet on how we determine NCI value, your best bet will be the proportionate method because you cannot just get up and use any value for the fair value. So your best bet will be the proportionate method. So here, under the proportionate method, NCI is equal to the percentage of ownership of the NCI multiplied by the net assets of the subsidiary. Be careful because I didn't say net assets is acquisition. I didn't say net assets at the reporting date. I just said net asset. It means NCI at acquisition, we will use net assets at acquisition. NCI at the reporting date, we will use net asset at a reporting date. That is why I'm leaving that as a generic net asset of the subsidiary. So don't say net asset of the subsidiary at acquisition. No, it's a generic thing. So we can, if we are looking for NCI at acquisition, we then use net asset of the subsidiary at acquisition. If you are looking at NCI at the reporting date, then we then use the net asset of the subsidiary at the reporting date. Either way, it is the percentage of ownership of the NCI in the subsidiary. With a fair value, two things can pop up in the fair value environment, either by using the shares of the subsidiary, so based on the number of shares, owned in the subsidiary. With this one, it means that we have to use the share price of the subsidiary to determine the fair value. So the fair value of NCI shall be the number of shares of NCI multiplied by the fair value, sorry, the share price of the subsidiary. So know when to use the share price of the subsidiary and when to use the share price of the parent. The share price of the parent will only be used when we are dealing with share exchange, the share price of the parent will only be used when we are dealing with share exchange. And the share price of the subsidiary will only be used if we are to value NCI based on the number of shares they own. Then the last one there is usually based on the value as per the directors, and that will be given directly in the question. You don't need a miracle for that. <laughs> you don't need a miracle for that. So based on the directors of the parents, valuation at acquisition. That is something <laughs> you may want to pray for, but you don't pray for such things because God is not waiting to answer such useless prayers. But it's, it's a simple thing in that particular case where it is given directly in the question. That's what we mean. So here, the fair value of NCI, it's stated directly in the question. So you don't need to do any workings. You just pick the figure and boom, you run with it. You pick the figure and boom, you run with it. That is the idea about that. So in a given question, either the fair value method or proportionate method will be used.
But if the question is quiet, what did we say? You go for the proportionate method. The reason why this is important, if there is any question, you raise your hand, we'll bring you up or you put it in the chat. The reason why this is important, it's because of the treatment of impairment in goodwill. So the treatment of impairment in goodwill depends on the method of valuation. of the NCI depends on the method of valuation of the NCI. And what the heck does that mean? Pretty simple. You know that already. So like we said a moment ago, NCI can be valued at pair value. And then NCI can be valued at a proportionate method. Pretty simple in this workflow. If NCI is valued at fair value, we share impairment in goodwill between NCI and the parent. So here, we share, or if you want, allocate any impairment in goodwill. between NCI and the parent. Sounds good? We share based on percentage of ownership, certainly. Let me add that as well. Based on the percentage of ownership. Sounds good? That's the idea. But if it is a proportionate method, thou shall not share. Thou shall not share. So if it is a proportionate method, any impairment in goodwill shall be treated against only the parent. In other words, the parent bears the entire risk of impairment in that case. That is the idea about non-controlling interest. So we've looked at fair value of consideration transferred in the goodwill calculation, three to five marks. Two, we've looked at NCI valuation still in the goodwill calculation. And we've looked at how we treat impairment in goodwill, still in the goodwill calculation, as well as arriving at our amount. Let me just drop this in. If there are any questions, you raise your hand and bring you up. Let me just drop this in, that there is a difference between goodwill at acquisition and goodwill at the reporting date. So the first figure we get here is going to be goodwill at acquisition if it is a positive figure. But if there is any impairment, we're gonna be less in that. So let me just build that into my presentation. If there's any impairment in goodwill, we're gonna less that so that we'll get a goodwill at the reporting date, which will go on the face of the statement of financial position. Goodwill at the reporting date, which will go on the face of the statement of financial position. So I wanna just build that in the process as we get our amount. That is the second item in the goodwill calculation.